So I'm here talking to my wife about um, self-limiting beliefs that are placed upon believers. And we're just, I'm just going to pick up our conversation and just continue with my wife. Um, we're just asking the question, why do believers live at such a level lower than what we were created and lower than what has been paid for us to live at? And I was thinking as you're talking about the verse that says, uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Like I have people getting into my car all the time. They can barely get in and get out. They're so out of shape and out of whack and they can't even take care of themselves. They smell, they, you know what I mean? Their faces have facial hair just, you know, unkept and just, I have it today and I have it just about every day where someone or multiple people just, they don't have an, uh, a level of self-worth high enough to take care of themselves. And, you know, that starts off in your 20s when you're, now you're out on your own and now you're a mature adult. You have low worth that just compounds over time and you just, and society around you tells you, you know, that's okay, that's acceptable, that's standard, because, well, everybody else is just like you. You know, it's you go to work, and there's, like, a bunch of people just like you. And um, I'm sitting there thinking, like, man, this is not acceptable. Like, all these people just can't get in and out of the car. I'm just getting... The more I know about what Jesus paid for, the more frustrated I'm getting. And it's like, I have to be careful not to get frustrated with the people, but it's the knowledge yeah. that they don't have access to, that they've never heard that Jesus, were, you know, that's why I'm just so excited about this revelation of Hebrews 5 of, I've never seen it, that when Jesus, I believe that when Jesus was in the garden and he was in the garden of Gethsemane before he was betrayed, the first sacrifice of Jesus was the sacrifice of his blood and sweat in the garden mm -hmm. before he suffered bodily which was when he was um, he was hit he had a crown of thorns and he was um, flogged with the right. thing the, uh, the flog 39 times or whatever it was his flesh was ripped the blood and the sweat I believe was Jesus paying the price to reverse the curse of poverty. Yeah. And I believe it because in Matthew 6, I was thinking about this, Matthew 6, the whole chapter is about, you know, it says in the garden he was, there was such an anguish and a stress, and there's a medical condition that he was, they're talking about, has to do with such a state of mental stress. Mm -hmm. I believe it is the, the stress of poverty and lack that is upon humanity. And and in Matthew 6, when he's talking to the disciples about addressing their, the stress and the, um, remember he said, do not worry. Mm -hmm. How many times did he say, do not worry about your food. Right. Do not worry about your clothing. Do not right. worry about your shelter. Right. Like just the basics, the basic needs of humanity right. is what we stress over. Why? Because there's a curse. There's a curse of toil on humanity. There's poverty. There's lack. And Jesus paid a price. And it's exciting because I never saw this, but in that scripture in Hebrews 5, it says, he had to pray to the Father to ask him not to die. Mm -hmm. It was so painful what he was going through in the garden that he had to ask the Father, let the cup pass from me because he had to go to the cross had to pay the price for sins he couldn't die there right. <laughs> he couldn't die just just you know sweating blood and and water wasn't going to be a sufficient to redeem us there was more suffering he had to endure mm. so he was asking the father mm. let this cup pass from me but not my will let your will be done mm. like father if it's your will i die here um, you know, I'm asking, let this cup pass so that I can go to the next cup and the next cup. Mm. Like there is a fullness of suffering that needed to take place wow. to be able to reverse the entire curse. Right. 
It was poverty, it was physical ailments, disease, and it was also yeah, the mind, the soul. Salvation of the soul, the absolute forgiveness and the salvation of soul came through the blood. So when the Lord showed me that, it just really hit me. And, and Luke talks about it, John talks about what happened in the garden. And I, but I've never heard it from the pulpit. And I don't, I don't see like a army of believers saying, with this knowledge, I come back to that verse, apart from knowledge, yeah. for a lack of knowledge, the people are perishing. In what way are we perishing? We as, you know, Christians on earth do not have, we are still suffering the anguish of poverty and lack. We're still not shining forth the light as beacons of the best health. Mm -hmm. right it's ho horrible health you just go to churches and you see the worst health people are just horrible condition there's no standard of health or fitness or anything people are suffering the same way and then mentally um people don't even know how to read the bible for themselves you know they're just totally reliant dependent on the preacher so their souls you know they, they think of themselves as disciples but they don't have a children where I can I go right to the father I, I feed myself they're dependent upon a pastor a preacher or someone on the internet to give them the word uh, so they're suffering just through the lack of knowledge of the true gospel who they who they are mm -hmm. so so why is there such a low standard you know across the board in Christianity, it's for a lack of the knowledge of the true gospel. And truly, you know, just I'm 25 years into like the faith and like reading the Bible and getting, you know, new revelation like that revelation of Jesus in the garden, mm. sweating blood and water. And your mind goes back, oh, wow, he's actually in the garden. Maybe he was in the very garden of Eden where. God says, I'm going to curse the, the ground. You will toil. Mm -hmm. You know, you will sweat. From your brow, right? You will sweat to labor, to eat, to drink, to have clothes and shelter. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came and reversed that curse. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. in a garden that he came and did the exact. Right? He, he paid a certain anguish. It was a wow. suffering so bad. The curse of poverty is so horrible that it would have, the suffering he endured would have killed him had he not asked yeah. the Father. The Bible, the, the Bible said the, the Father heard his prayers and he strengthened him. He allowed him to move on to the next phase of suffering. And an angel strengthened him, right? Yeah, and angels came and strengthened him. But um, something for you to think about as you watch this clip. Um, where are you at? In the terms of your knowledge, your revelation of the gospel, this is a challenge to you as it is a challenge to us to, you know, Jesus, Jesus actually came, he's the author of our faith, and the faith is actually a perspective. If you don't even know that your faith is a perspective, then you don't even know the gospel to begin with, that salvation was a salvation of the human soul and it entered us into the perspective of see we aren't in the personal development space we are wholly developed from god's perspective through the cross of christ i'm now a fully developed son or daughter of god but that's the beginning that's the he's the author of my faith and there's also a finishing of my faith so it just begins with salvation the perspective of being a son or a daughter of God, a new creation, mm -hmm. but he's going to take me from level to level, faith to faith, glory to glory, and my life outside of me is going to look no greater than the revelation of the gospel within me. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge to you today. What level of understanding do you have of salvation, of the gospel, and is that something you feel you need to have a uh, absolute renovation of like tear it down and rebuild because that's I feel most people do need an entire rebuild of mm -hmm. their own personal gospel revelation uh -huh. because if you don't have the foundation that's 
stable and solid, mm -hmm. then you're building the life that you've built on a, whatever you've built on the idea of the gospel you have in your soul. Um, it's only going to be limited to yeah, what the, that belief is. Yeah, your life is going to reflect the accuracy or the the errancy of that belief system. And for the most part, I've been off for 20 years. I've been off 25 years. I've been off of my understanding of the gospel was totally a horrible foundation. And now I'm just reestablishing a foundation that the world should be able to see outside of your life. Your body and your health, your finances, your, your life should be a reflection of a foundation that is, it starts with an absolute reversal of everything that was cursed at the beginning. Mm -hmm. the, the, the finance, the, that's why the John 3, he says, I wish you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Because he knew, and that's the Word of God. The Word of God knows your salvation is its physical, its health, its mental, and its spiritual. And so this is all biblical. It's nothing new. It's just rediscovering what's all... It's discovering for the first time what's always been there. God bless you. I'm going to um, put this up for your enjoyment. God bless.